In July of 2015, Melissa Loomis was walking her dogs. A few moments later, they were fighting with the raccoon, and a few moments after that, the raccoon sank its teeth into Melissa's wrist. Ultimately, that brief encounter resulted in a hospital stay for Melissa. Before long, she crossed paths with Dr. A.J. Seth, and soon the two made medical history. Dr. A.J. Seth's patient, Melissa Loomis, lost part of her arm due to a monster infection that almost took her life. Getting someone to move their arm had been done maybe 100, 150 times in the world. They said, you want to do something cool, get her to feel her prosthetic hand. In his book, Rewired, Dr. Seth shares how he and Melissa made medical history when the surgery he performed on her changed the future of amputees forever. Dr. A.J. Seth is joining us now, and we welcome you to the 700 Club. Thank you. Thank you for having me. When you first met Melissa, she had already been bitten by the raccoon. She's taken to the hospital. I mean, I mean, really, it just looked like you were going to be treating a raccoon bite, right? Correct. I mean, I see infections all the time. And when I saw her infection, I thought it would be just a regular course. You, you know, do IV antibiotics, and if that doesn't work, you take them to surgery, and they go home and live a normal life. And that's what I thought her case would be. Did, did her diabetes impact the infection and what followed? Yeah, it, with diabetes, unfortunately, the ability to fight infection is lowered. And, you know, you think that would be a case, but I've dealt with diabetics before. It just happened to be a, a special case, I guess. I mean, your description of the infection in your book called Rewired <laughs> is astonishing. I mean, it was like every place that you that you incised or, or cut was filled with infection. What were you thinking at that point? You know, I had told her beforehand that there was no way she was um, going to lose her arm. Yeah. And then I did the surgery. And it took 90 minutes. A uh, 10 minute procedure turned into 90 minutes. And everywhere I looked, like you said, the top bottom of her arm was just filled with infection. And it was at that point I realized that uh, this, is, this is more involved than a, a normal case. But you still thought you could clean it out and, and it would heal. And at what point did you know, wow, this arm's got to come off? I think that at a point I was maybe in denial on the fact that I wanted to do everything to save her arm. Sure. I mean, taking somebody's arm is, is it's a life-changing um, decision you're making. Mm -hmm. And when I got the phone call that said, if you don't amputate her arm in the next hour, she's going to die, it was that point where, you know, I, I didn't have a choice. And, you know, that's what she said to me. You know, he's, you know I said, I'm sorry I didn't save your arm. And she said, uh, I, you know, that didn't even matter. She said, I just want you to save my life. Save your life, exactly. Um, she was, and you say this throughout the book, quite an amazing patient. I mean, every doctor, of course, wants to be successful in what they're doing, but it was like the two of you had a, a common bond, and part of it was because of the kind of person she was. Talk about Melissa. Yeah, Melissa's a, it's just, she's a phenomenal patient. She can handle adversity yeah. better than I've seen any patient before. Um, and in the book, which uh, is, it's really not a medical book, it's just a story. And it's a story about adversity and what type of patient she was. And in the fact that I, I felt like we were just sooner or later on a track that God was leading us. Mm -hmm. And uh, between God and Melissa, they got an incredible result. The good news in the middle of all of this, if, if you could say it, well, it is good news, was that she was actually left-handed. That's, I didn't even it, realize yeah. that for a while. <laughs> and one day, I mean, I was so involved in the case, and then I was like, you left-handed? And she's like, I am. And I thought, oh, that's, that's at least yeah. a saving grace there. So once you knew she was gonna lose the arm, what, what did you think would be the next step for her? Were you thinking prosthetics or? No, a lot of times in that, that uh, scenario, uh, as an orthopedic hand surgeon, you kind of hand her off to someone who does prosthetics. But for some reason, I just couldn't do that. Um, you know, I had made her a promise that she wouldn't lose her arm. And no matter what, I wasn't, we had formed this bond, I wasn't going to just leave her to someone else to take care of her. And that's when I said, you know, Melissa, I said, I'll, I'll make you the most advanced amputee in the world. And, and uh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> they say, they do say that, and, uh, but, you know, my biggest thing is I'm not 
this world-renowned surgeon. I'm in a small town. Um, there are thousands of great doctors out there, I think, that can do the same thing. I was just, for some reason, picked by God to do this opportunity and, and that help That was an her. answer to prayer, though. I mean, you had within you always, from early on in your medical career, a desire to do something that would be scientifically significant for people. I did. Um, you know, my parents immigrated here in the 60s and to the land of opportunity yeah. and came here so that I would get a better education. And forever my medical career, I wanted to do something to give back. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, maybe there'll be some day where I can do something, you know, to give back and advance science. And this happened to come along. Well, let's talk about prosthetics because I think it is fascinating that that people can move a limb, well, not their limb, but a right. prosthetic limb. Right. How do they do that? So there uh, is uh, a procedure that was started at Northwestern in Chicago. Um, two people, Dr. Dumanian and Dr. Kaiken, who were pioneers in this. And whenever somebody has a prosthetic, they have to you know, contract their biceps and triceps to open their hand. It's just not normal. Mm -hmm. Their procedure was to rewire the body with no implanted devices to get them to just normally think open the hand. Yeah. And that's what had been done probably 200, 300 times. They had kind of challenged me to say, hey, why don't you do something to get her to feel a prosthetic hand? Could you even embrace that at that moment? No, I mean, if no, somebody just, said that to me at that moment, I would say, what do you mean feel? Uh, it's not, it's I, not connected. I, I remember on the phone when they said that, and I thought, there's no way. And they said, well, talk to somebody at Cleveland Clinic who connected me to somebody in Canada. And they kind of walked me through on the phone on how they did it. And I was like, okay, let's, let's do this. So in layman's terms, kind of walk us through how you did it. Because you're actually talking about a prosthetic limb that when you touch the fingers Correct. of it, she feels that touch. How is that possible? Yeah, so I just simply took nerves that we had, you know, severed in the amputated arm, and it's the nerve to close your hand. And, and I tell people it's like a wire going to a speaker. If you cut the speaker wire, there's still music going through. It just doesn't have an end point. Uh -huh. So I took that speaker or the speaker wire and moved it to another speaker, which happened to be the inside of her arm. So since there's a two-way path, there's a nerve that goes from the brain to the arm to, to move. There has to be something going backwards that gives you feeling. So now her brain really thinks she's regrown an arm right here. And She's phenomenal. She's 150% better than I ever thought she would get. She can move and feel, and she feels hot and cold and Good pain. Grief. Everything that you can feel, she can do the same. What was it like the day that you did the first test on this? Her dad was in the room. I mean, it's a, it's a magic moment in the book. It, it was. The, when we did that first time at Johns Hopkins, I remember telling her father, I was like, you know, why don't you be the first one to, to test this? I said, you know, uh, you've been with her whole life. And I remember him, what he did was he pushed on, on the thumb and, and the prosthetic is, has not been attached to her because it's uh, made for a 200 pound military male and she's about 105 pounds. Wow. So when he pushed on the thumb, on the inside of her arm, she felt her thumb for the first time. So not it's not even on her body. No. It's sitting out there on a stand, and mm -hmm. she was able to feel. What does this mean to people who are losing limbs for whatever reason? I mean, how usable is this to the average person? I think with, with funding and advancement technology, we want to bring this, you know, mainstream. She's so far ahead of ahead of technology yeah. that we can't even catch up to her. So uh, Melissa and I have been trying to raise money and, and funding because we believe we have an idea research-wise that we can develop an arm that is more usable, uh, more inexpensive wow. to help others. And uh, we did it for the Wounded Warriors and hopefully one day we'll get that funding. And she, she is fully on board and recognizes that she is a bionic answer to many people's prayers. <laughs> she, she has a phenomenal outlook on life. And whatever she can do 
you know, to help other amputees. And you see it in her love for dogs, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how, how she treats these dogs and, and their rescue dogs. It, it just shows you where her heart is. Yeah, well, that's what got her into this in the first place. It raccoons is. attacking her dogs. And she just went to reach for the dog collar and the raccoon in fear got her. I mean, I, I'll tell you, the story is fascinating. You need to get Dr. A.J. Seth's book. It's called Rewired. It's not overly medical for those of us who don't have a medical background. It's really pretty inspiring, and it's available in stores nationwide. Thank you for your work. It's phenomenal. Thank you for having wow. me. I really appreciate that. Answer to many, many needs.